China launched its first astronaut into orbit in October of 2003, 19 years ago. America's first was in 1961, over 60 years ago. But last year, the Chinese National Space Agency launched 53 rockets. America launched 51. China's rockets are all disposable, so their commitment to space is clear. China's new space station, Tiangong, is a third-generation station like Mir and ISS. Its design will start with three modules, but later expand to six. That means it will grow in size as the ISS is winding down. NASA's replacement for ISS will be smaller. At this rate, China will pass America in station size and capacity within 10 years. My name is John Blinko. I am president of Gateway Spaceport and CEO of Offworld Industries Corporation. NASA is not even trying to go to the next level with their new space station designs. Each of the options that they have funded are smaller in size and function to what we already have. With NASA's Lunar Gateway and the Artemis program developing concurrently, they probably have their hands full, but size matters. If the next off-world laboratory were built using Virgo modules, it would offer enormous volume, allowing for many more astronauts performing 10 times more experiments than we will have with another ISS-type station. A virgo sized module would have enough room for many of our astronauts and lots of America's friends and allies. We do that now on ISS, but only once in a while. With bigger modules, we can have many of our friends on station every day. We believe that if we do not build large space stations and build them affordably, then this era of expansion, which could be extraordinary, will exclude us those of us in the middle class. And that would be terrible because the opportunity is here with machines like Sargon Systems to build big stations. It's important that everyday people become a part of this extraordinary step for humankind because it'll be much, much bigger if middle class people were there. Large scale infrastructure needs to be built to support that expansion. These space construction machines could usher in a golden era of spaceflight and off-world life for millions. Our space industry started off with huge events in rapid succession. After Sputnik and Yuri Gagarin, America came back with Armstrong and Aldrin's moon landing. Five more moon landings defined our commitment. These events energized the world. People everywhere saw a big future in space. TV shows and movies like Star Trek, Star Wars, 2001 depicted big ships, big stations, and most importantly, people like us exploring and living in space. It seemed like a great start to what would be an exciting future where millions of people would be living and working in space. But when the U.S. government cut the space budget, the American space industry could not fill the gap. Decades went by with only modest investments. We built a six-person space station and only with international partners. Rocket technology investments were low. So low, we started buying rocket engines from Russia. Our bright future in space had dimmed to a weak glow, but something else was happening in America, a long ways from Cape Canaveral. Technology investments were being made by private investors in the home computer industry. Engineers flocked to this new mecca where many small companies were developing new technologies rapidly. The idea of do it right the first time evolved into work fast and break things. This new work philosophy is based on speedy innovation over a steady but slower progress. Slow and steady works for NASA because every year they get more money from Congress. A perfect example is SLS's 20-year development timeline compared to SpaceX Starship's rapid development in the last few years. I love NASA, but I want to visit space before I die, and I don't think NASA is going to get me there. SpaceX Starship and off-world industry Sargon Systems, they can get it done.
When the internet connected everyone's computer and later their phones, Silicon Valley expanded again into the most important technology hub in the world. The biggest thing that made Silicon Valley happen were the small investors. They kickstarted small companies with vital investments to flush out a growing industry into a vibrant interconnected web of information systems and data centers. The marriage between angel investors, VCs, and innovative companies became a normal fixture in Silicon Valley, and it began to expand beyond the city limits. America became a hotbed of new tech that changed the world forever. Many of these talented engineers began to apply their talents to other industries. All through the stagnant years, where the space industry was sluggishly moving from one government contract to another, some brave, innovative engineers would try to start a business to help bring growth to an industry that could be far more exciting than any other. They failed because they could not get the money that they needed. The investment community was not connected to the space industry. Their great ideas never got out of the gate. Decades later, when Silicon Valley engineers began to apply their talents in the space industry, they turned to the investors they knew from Silicon Valley to get funding, and they got it. What we started to see was not just new rockets, but rockets that could land, smaller satellites that could do the job of bigger ones, and huge space-based communication networks far superior to anything before. Starting and funding new innovative businesses is America's superpower. And because we can do that, the price of space access has dropped and the promise of off-world colonization is on the horizon. With a big reusable rocket like SpaceX Starship coming online soon, and a well-developed investment community at hand, the opportunity to build large structures in space has arrived. If America and our friends can start building big structures off-world first, then we can establish a technological lead that will enrich our nations for generations. The Chinese now dominate the solar power panel market that we started. They also dominate the electric vehicle battery market. If SpaceX did not exist, they would have twice as many launches as we did last year. Now America is starting the space construction industry. Are we going to let China take that away too? If we do, we will be second place in everything off-world. Those who dominate the creation of infrastructure will dominate expansion. That's been true for centuries down here. It'll be the same up there. Back when I flew big jets, I lived in China for three years working for a Chinese cargo company. Everywhere I went, there were new roads, new airports, high-speed rail networks, and big modern ports. China has developed their construction industry to build big structures fast. It's only a matter of time before they start building large structures in space. If they build transportation infrastructure in space before we do, we may never catch up with them. More than a century ago, Alfred Maher wrote an important book called The Influence of Sea Power Upon History. For thousands of years, the seas were the greatest realm of influence on Earth. Then in the last century, it became air power. This century, control of the Earth will be determined by space power. For 50 years, America has used low Earth orbit as a home for global navigation, communication systems, and surveillance. As we expand into space, the value of fuel depots, maintenance facilities, and large-scale habitation will surpass that of any terrestrial infrastructure made to date. What we build in space will become a national security imperative. We need to start building the space now. We need to build big stations and structures. We need to develop a space construction industry so the space will stay free. Angels, VCs, private investors, it is your choice. Help this new industry grow and we can stay out in front for decades like we have with aviation. Off-World Industries Corporation is having its first raise. This is a friends and family round, but if you are a Gateway Spaceport member, even the free membership, you are entitled to participate. For details, use the link here. This early funding will help us secure our provisional patents. Your help can make a big difference. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Ad Astra.